Thank you very much. Salam alaikum. It's a great honor to be included in your conference. And I want to thank everyone who's participating, either by their official presentations or their interventions or just by tuning in. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah, okay, the sound is good. Um, je veux re remercier tous les, tous les gens qui viennent encore de, de Djibouti, qui habitent à Djibouti, même des personnes qui ont déménagé uh, de Djibouti, inclut les affaires. So, I wanted to just speak some words in French too, uh, to acknowledge uh, those in Djibouti who uh, are there now or who have come from there and to welcome them also. Uh, are you, I'm going to screen share. Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, so yes, we see your screen very well and we hear you very well. Thank you. So the first slide is this one. Um, and I've come to realize after representing as lawyer of the Afar people for some now 30 years, um, through asylum claims and immigration cases, through humanitarian cases, and, and in the more recent um, years since 2006, humanitarian assistance, I've come to realize and be humbled by the work that we all do and, and merely say uh, on behalf of our foundation, but as sharing with all of you that we are all trying to make a difference. Uh, we, we, on certain days, we can take some credit for some achievements, and Professor Magnet has led that cause very well with the United Nations and the descriptions in their documents for the first time ever, uh, recognizing the persecution and the crimes against humanity and the disenfranchisement, the word uh, that I didn't like to see, but like to see acknowledged by the UNHCR Special Rapporteur. So, as I say, I, I come to this conference with some 30 years of experience representing AFAR matters and issues, but not just restricted to those. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a lawyer for the put upon and, and the, the harmed all, the world over, uh, but I got involved in the AFAR cause because of the many cases that I had represented and ultimately met uh, Ahmad Youssef and the two of us went to uh, the Afar region of Ethiopia um, 15 years ago. And that's how my involvement became deeper. And as I said, I'm, I'm humbled in the daily effort that we all make to try to make a difference. And on certain good days, we see that our efforts are, are successful. Um, This will be common knowledge to, to most people tuning into this conference, speaking at it, attending it, of where the AFAR's traditional homelands are and who they are, estimated to be some three to five million people. It's very hard uh, to know for sure the exact number because a census has never really been done. But they inhabit three corners of three countries. Uh, uh, other speakers have talked about the uh, colonial and imperialistic goals of certain governments uh, who occupied that area and now the governments who control it, uh, all without any respect at all to the Afar uh, traditions, culture, heritage, language, rights, and so forth. But that you get an idea from the size of it there. It's a very significant area uh, that's by and large sparsely populated because the Afar people are largely still uh, nomadic to some extent, uh, if not also in their culture, their customs and their thinking. Um, so we started this uh, charitable foundation. We've got legal status in Canada. We've got charitable status. So we started it in 2006. You can see in this slide uh, our mandate, uh, what we're trying to achieve, okay, to build a brighter future. Uh, by boosting awareness and advocacy for the voiceless, by providing education and literacy for the next generation, 
and by delivering health and food relief for the desperate. And of course, the, the, the call to arms, if you will, together we'll change the course of history. And conferences like this are a very important step forward in that direction. Uh, we've raised about $700,000 in these years um, through donors, mostly in Canada. And we've deployed that money to projects uh, in Ethiopia, in the Afar region, but also in Djibouti, also in Yemen. And uh, a side uh, or byproduct of what we do is uh, really enabling the Afar diaspora in Canada, but elsewhere, to... Um, to do their own thing, to do their own projects, to nurture their their first generation and, and more. Um, so I wanna just briefly tell you about uh, what we've done with that $700,000, okay? So the starting point is something that this conference has been very good at so far as I've tuned in and listened to each of the speakers, uh, organize events, uh, create media and other platforms to increase donor awareness, and, and to very much document the Afar people and their challenges, and, and to uh, include in our, um, our, our work uh, what we call advocacy, because no one's going to be moved to action unless the advocacy has some clear messaging that's based on some very good empirical evidence. And, and I, I want to cite again the work of Professor Magnet and Ahmed, because they've been very good at, at interviewing uh, refugees who have come from Eritrea and documenting through video, audio, and written declarations the persecution that they've fled, but also that they've suffered before they fled. Um, and that's the empirical evidence that's very important in any advocacy campaign. You've got to have strong, objective evidence that the United Nations, as example, will independently verify and only then publish a report which was just done uh, recently. Okay. Um, this probably the slide here comprises most of what we've done. Um, we've funded food assistance into UNHCR camps located in the Afar region. We uh, deployed a new technology called a biosand water filter. There's a picture there uh, of my son, uh, who was then 18 years old, training local Afar people in Ethiopia how to build these biosand water filters. We built 50 of them and deployed them to a community, and they were very helpful in reducing the incidence of cholera. And of course, when you reduce the incidence of cholera, the, the health of the community is, is improved, and fewer people suffer the uh, very drastic consequences, including death of cholera. Um, we've deployed medical supplies and expertise. So that means uh, we've shipped medical equipment and supplies, and we've sent people uh, who have um, you know, been involved in providing medical expertise and, and training local people in the Afar region on hygiene and, and um, uh, childbirth. Uh, food supplements and clothing, uh, and on it goes. Uh, a water reservoir infrastructure project, which we funded. I'll show you a slide on that. And more recently, unfortunately, because of the civil war in Ethiopia um, and the massive amount, I think estimated to be some 600,000 Afar people were displaced internally in the Afar region uh, into other areas uh, and their villages were pillaged and burned and uh, their livestock killed. So uh, it's been horrible to try to fund uh, uh, the relocation of these people back to their villages and their customary where, ways of, of life. But that's, of course, been an important priority recently. Um, all boats funded. Uh, a bursary scholarship program for post-secondary students um, in the Afar region. These are students that came from young men who would largely have been um, recruited uh, for military service. It has no uh, end, the, the, no limit in its duration. Of course, that alone is a violation of international law. Um, military service is not itself, but if it has uh, uh, no end to it, 
if it goes on for long. So we have, we have funded uh, through a scholarship program, many post-secondary students. Uh, they've gone on to rewarding careers in the Afar region or in Addis Ababa, including some have come to Canada, uh, who I've met after funding their education uh, in, in Ethiopia. And of course, young girls, uh, their education outcomes aren't very good in a traditional uh, nomadic society. So we've uh, used a particular boarding school in Asaita, and we funded the primary education for young girls there so that they have a better uh, future ahead of them. Um, income generation programs, including microfinance, Deboita is the Afar word for a, a hut structure. Um, when there's been flooding or other uh, reasons why these deboitas have been destroyed, we've uh, tried to preserve that particular craft. Uh, women mostly do this work, but we paid them to build uh, huts for their villages. And, and, and that provides income generation. It also preserves a traditional uh, way of life. And then livestock replenishment when there's been drought, when there's been war, uh, if uh, families don't have livestock from which to live, uh, and that means trade, that means meat, that means uh, dairy products, uh, then they have no way to sustain themselves. So we've, uh, with our local implementing partner in, in Ethiopia called the Afar Pastoralist Development Association, we've funded those very important projects. And then this, this is a, an interesting slide here. Uh, I'm in the picture, uh, as is my uh, fellow director, Jason Kelly, and uh, a couple of other of our directors. It's out in the desert. Uh, we've, we, we spent $60,000. Uh, it translated into a million Ethiopian bear to, to build this reservoir um, so that it would hold 7 million liters of rainwater. When the rains come, they can be very big and they just usually wash away out in the desert and there's no way to capture it. But if you build a reservoir, what's sometimes known as a cistern, uh, the water can be captured uh plant life grows around it stops the erosion and then communities of people and their livestock can come and and live off it which is which is really wonderful and we've been we we built this one uh reservoir in this location called bidu um so uh, why do we do all this uh uh what's going on over there that needs us to do all all these humanitarian i wish I wish we didn't exist. I, I wish there was no need for this foundation. Uh, well, there is a need for it because of the refugee crisis of, of uh, Afar Eritreans fleeing for decades out of Eritrea and largely crossing into Ethiopia, putting pressure on the local communities there who share the same language, culture, customs, religion, and everything else. And they're welcoming, but they're the least able to provide supports for this significant population. I'm gonna show you a slide that's gonna show you the size of these populations, but, but we're doing these humanitarian things because there's a massive need for it. Um, I was asked to present on the topic of the plight of Afar refugees and, and how to protect their rights. Well, well, we at this charitable foundation have found the value is in protecting life, uh, at, at least in the short term, uh, Professor Joe and Ahmed and all the rest of you are talking about longer term goals. You're talking about possibly change, regime change. You're talking about possible new constitution. Well, until those two things happen, you know, there's a need to backfill with, with preserving life through these humanitarian projects I've just now described. So, so this will be no news to you, but, uh, it, it, it's a slide that's going to be shared with you and, and everyone else and beyond today. This is the definition uh, from the 1951 convention uh, signed by some 140 countries, uh, still used largely today and by Canada and many others. This is what the definition of a refugee is. And by any and all measure, anyone fleeing out of Eritrea, be they Afar or any other ethnicity, are fleeing this. They're fleeing persecution based on race, based on their nationality. Sometimes there's been religious persecution, of course, in, in Eritrea because of their, their um, family. Their, their father or their mother may have spoken against the regime or may be involved in organizing and become significant uh, entrepreneurs or powerful in many other ways. And, and that means that 
the government's going to target them. And of course, if they've expressed any political opinion whatsoever against anything happening in Eritrea, they are immediately a target. So that's what causes us to be in this situation. That's why we're gathered today at this conference, this important conference. These are the metrics. These are the numbers. And this isn't from me. Uh, this, is, this is from the UNHCR. This is a published document from June of last year, only a year old. So it's very recent. It shows you the significant numbers of, of uh, uh, in Samara. That's the capital city of the Afar region. There are some registered, now the registered numbers, uh, estimates vary, but the res registered numbers are the official numbers, and there's plenty more, sometimes thought to be twice as many as number. In Samara alone, there are 57,000 refugees, all of them, I would say, I've been there 11 times, I would say 100% of that number uh, are Afar from, from uh, Eritrea. And if that's the registered official number, those who have you know, come under the mandate of the UNHCR, there's many more again who have been uh, uh, registered with the, uh, um, the Ethiopian government, ARA, the uh, agency there. And, and now, as Professor Magnet has said, even, even that government is refusing to register them. And then, of course, again, the many others who are not officially registered. So it's a crisis by any and all measure and descriptions. And that's why we're gathered here today to, to deal with the many issues that creates this crisis that our foundation is required to respond to by the many humanitarian projects I've listed there. Um, that gives you an overview of the topic, very quick overview of the topic I was asked to present today. Um, I share this with you with, with the... Uh, It humbles me to be part of your group, your conference, to broadcast this, to share the, these um, this empirical evidence uh, with others that aren't as informed, uh, don't come from that region, aren't as aware, and largely, really, unless we press uh, them, they don't really care because there's lots of other issues in the world that they are, are maybe more aligned with or the headlines in the newspapers tell us about or the news late at night you know it's it's very rare that uh, we get this chance and that the united nations has published what they've recently done uh, again uh, doing due to the heavy lifting of professor magnet and ahmed and and the group that they work with and i've been uh, uh, very uh, cognizant of that and helped in a very small way but that's why we're here um that's why our foundation exists and we, we have tried at other of these conferences in the past, in Sweden and Belgium and France, uh, in Canada, we've tried to share um, uh, some of our metrics, some of our achievements with others. And we've asked of other countries to organize uh, themselves, build, uh, build a governance foundation, establish a not-for-profit organization, leading hopefully to a charity that can issue charity. receipts to this. We've got a model that works. It's tied, tried, tested, and true. This model works. If it's if it's pulled and pushed by by Ahmed, by Aisha, hopefully they're tuned in. Uh, this is a model that's working for us here, and it's working for the community here in Canada, and and. It's working for uh, our local partner in the Afar region of Ethiopia, and we're deploying money, and we're saving lives, and we're building, uh, you know, dignity for people that lost everything, and giving them hope. And and if they're tuned in, hopefully some are. Uh, they're listening and and they're seeing uh, the work that we are all doing uh, because we care about their life. Um, and and it's not this constitutional model that that Joe and Ahmed and others have built. It, yes, it's being proposed. It's called the Afar uh, constitutional model, but it, but it is a constitutional model, as Joe Magnet said, and I loved his metrics. It's the first I've seen that. How many constitutions have been drafted? How many have been adopted? What the life of the average constitution is? It's only seventeen years. Okay, this is a this particular constitutional model based on ethnic federalism is the most stable. It represents the countries that have the best. 
uh, chance of, of surviving and thriving and, and having peace, order, and good government for them all, everyone included, including the ethnic minorities, uh, you know, this is the one that works. That's why Joe Magnet's comments uh, cannot be seen to be uh, uh, coming from the Afar corner or the Afar bias. I'm telling you, as a human rights lawyer, uh, these are tried, tested, and true constitutional pr principles that have test been tested the world over, have the most and, and um, uh, lowest chance of war, lowest chance of, of ripping apart or failing, and the best opportunity for, for people of all descriptions to thrive in. Um, that's why I, I think I wanted to participate in today's conference. I want to put this name, my name and signature on that document. And, and I, I know uh, many of you will want to do that. And, and you've, you've received it ahead of time. Read it, think about it, and, and really accommodate the things that are in it. Uh, they, they, in, in, by some measure, they have really nothing to do with Afar background, but they have everything to do with the world and what what works. Thank you very much. I think my last slide is this one. Um, if there are questions and comments, particularly, uh, we're all interested in them. But I want to thank you again. God to Thank you, brother Odi.